Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with our Never a Dull Moment Currencies Report. I'm joined as usual by Dan Bell from HiFX. Hi Dan and Hi. thanks for coming in again. Thank you. Um, look, um, I guess the overriding theme that uh, you're seeing in the currency market still is, is very much the central banks driving what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, what in particular has, has caught your eye from the central banks uh, recently? Yeah, so I think overall um, the, the, the big picture in, in currency markets continues to be um, the trend that we're seeing in the in the US dollar, um, driven by uh, unconventional monetary policy stimulus from the US central bank. So the US have been printing money now since 2008, so they announced their first round of, of QE back in 2008. Um, so we're in our fifth year of that now, and uh, I know the, uh, the the New Zealand dollar has been a hot topic uh, amongst the, the media and local um, uh, local analysts. Um, but I think ultimately the key driver of the New Zealand dollar against the US is US central bank interest rate policy. And um, uh, for now, um, the US are prepared to continue their quantitative easing program. But I think we are seeing more signs within the voting uh, voting members of the Federal Reserve. Uh, that some of the members would like to see them talk about how they're going to exit the, uh, the stimulus um, packages that they've got in place. Uh, and I think the market is also starting to anticipate that as well. So um, that, I think, is going to be a key driver of the Kiwi-US cross rate over the next um, 6 to 12 months. We have seen the, the Kiwi down a bit recently against the greenback. Do you think there's a bit of anticipation going on already? Well, I think that the drop that we've had in the last few days was driven by the Italian election result. Um, so we had um, effectively Italy went to the polls, and they've got a uh, they've got an uncertain uh, election result, um, which has seen Berlusconi come back quite strong. And the concern there is that um, Berlusconi is not seen as as pro austerity. Um, so the current um, the current government in, in Italy has been. Um, Going through a number of uh, reforms and, and 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 putting austerity through the through their economy, to um, to try and meet their their budget targets that the um, the ECB have set for them, um, and obviously um, the public have have said by voting for Berlusconi that they're not supportive of these measures. So I think the concern there really is that um, the Italians don't like austerity. <laughs> um, they um, that they're probably not alone. I mean, the European um, the European region continues to, to struggle. Uh, although the euro has been stronger against a lot of other currencies, they they continue to find it pretty tough and expect it to be um, again no growth in the European region this year. And and I guess the the Italian election. I mean, as you're, you're noting, it, it really highlights that um, that you, the eurozone is far from out of the woods in terms of their debt problems. Um, and as you say, I mean, no one likes austerity, um, so there could be ramifications out of this for Spain, Greece again, um, other countries too. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I mean, I think there was a, a bit of a knee-jerk um, sort of reaction, a bit of a panic reaction on, on sort of Monday and Tuesday when the markets um, realised the, the election result was, was going to be inconclusive. Um, Overnight, we actually saw Italy and uh, Italy sold a, a, um, about 6.5 billion euros worth of, of government bonds at, at a reasonable level. So, um, investors still have an appetite to, to buy European um, sovereign debt. Um, we know that the European Central Bank, who, who said last year that they were going to do whatever it takes to save the save the uh, the, the European uh, Union, um, and they will continue to, to to come out with policy responses as required. So I think we're we're out of the worst of it, but we're certainly not out of the woods. And I think uh, ultimately um, the European region is going to struggle. And uh, you know, relative to the U.S. economy, which at the moment is um, you know they've got their own um, issues with uh, with budget cuts uh, and fiscal uh, fiscal cuts coming into effect. Um, however, their economy is still expected to grow at about two to two point five percent this year. And and the U.S. housing market is is obviously where all the uh, global financial crisis issues began, and that's really looking a lot stronger now, isn't it? It is a lot stronger. So you, you're looking at now quite a strong trend in uh, U.S. Uh, house prices uh, across the board. So um, that, to me, also signals that the U.S. economy is in a, is in a much better position um, than they have been. Uh, we know that um, the, the housing market in New Zealand uh, obviously drives a lot of economic um, uh, economic momentum, and I think it's similar in the in the U.S. Um, where households, where you know, if the the price of their, their their properties is going up, they're going to be a lot more willing to spend and and um, and, and feel a lot more confident about the prospects uh, of the economy. So that, to, to me, is going to be a key driver. Um, 
the US economy is still, um, you know, they still have a high unemployment rate, and we know that the Federal Reserve are targeting a lower unemployment rate. They're, they're, they're currently sitting at about 7.9%, and the Fed want unemployment down at 6.5%. Um, so, again, watching the US employment figures over the next few months is going to be quite critical in terms of understanding when the Federal Reserve will start to signal that they are going to remove some of the stimulus out of their, um, out of their system. So over the next month, obviously, the, the next non-farm payrolls uh, figures will be very closely watched um, due on March the 8th? That's right. So uh, March the 8th, which is um, a week or so away, uh, will be closely watched. I think the market's expecting about 150,000 new jobs and for the unemployment rate to, to hold steady at about 7.8-7.9%. But um, again, watch for any surprises there because if we do really start to see any meaningful improvement in that unemployment rate, the market will quickly respond and will start pricing in um, an earlier exit um, by the Fed from uh, this QE infinity program that they've been, uh, they've, they've been undertaking. Now, you, you've also been looking at um, gold prices. Now, I mean, obviously that's an interesting thing for someone who's in, in currency uh, to be looking at. What's your interest there and what have you noticed? Well, the gold price, um, the gold, gold was obviously very popular through the GFC and um, it had a massive rally to almost 2000 US dollars an ounce. It actually peaked at just over $1,900 US an ounce in August 2011. At the same time, the New Zealand dollar actually peaked against the US and made a, po a post float high at about 8840 since then, uh, the gold price is actually down almost 20%, so we're hovering around 1500 US dollars an ounce. The New Zealand dollar is sitting at around 82.50 at the moment, so still relatively high. However, I think the gold price is showing us that investors are starting to um, change their overall view of where the US dollar is going and where the global, is, the global economy is going. So previously, I think uh, the gold price was reflecting the fact that Investors saw a couple of, uh, of fairly negative scenarios that could have actually evolved, and that was either hyperinflation because you, uh, global central banks had pumped the world full of too much money, or uh, ultimately that the world was going to fall off a cliff because um, you know we had uh, the European sovereign debt crisis and the US, um, the US had with their own debt issues. Those things haven't come to fruition. We don't have uh, a major inflation problem around the world, uh, and the world hasn't fallen off a cliff. Uh, the US economy is obviously starting to gather more momentum whilst uh, the New Zealand economy is still having sort of fits and bursts of, of, of activity, we're still expected to grow at about 2.5% this year as well. Um, so overall, um, I think uh, that to me signals that the US dollar has is, uh, is, is got a, a stronger tone to it overall. And I think um, from the second half of this year and into 2014, I think those got that gold price will continue to, um, to come off and uh, the US dollar will continue to strengthen. Now, um, I guess in terms of um, the uh, reserve banks, if we go, we go back to them, we've obviously got another um, official cash rate announcement coming out of uh, Graham Wheeler, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, on the 14th. Before then, we get one from the Reserve Bank of Australia. Now, what are we expecting <coughs> from them next week? So the market is, um, is not um, expecting the Reserve Bank of Australia to cut interest rates next week. Um, Although there is about a 30% odd probability priced into the um, to the money markets, <clears throat> so we know that uh, in a recent statement from the Reserve Bank of Australia's governor, um, he's keeping the, the the idea of interest rate cuts on the table, but um, he will be assessing their their economy. Obviously, that Australia has a very high currency, one of the strongest in the world, and um, that they want the Australian dollar to go lower. So. Um, I don't think they're going to cut next week, but I do think that the Reserve Bank of Australia is going to maintain a more um, a more sort of dovish tone when it comes to comes to the interest rates, and we continue to think they will cut interest rates again this year. <coughs> and that is having an impact on the Kiwi Aussie cross rate, although we have come off from recent uh, highs. <coughs> so the New Zealand dollar actually got to a high of over 82 cents against the Australian dollar a couple of weeks ago. Um, since then we've, we've come off and we're trading at about 81 cents or so today. But um, the overall view is that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand is likely to stay on hold with, with interest rates, uh, whilst the Reserve Bank of Australia is still expected to cut. So that differential is uh, starting to favour 
the Kiwi over the Aussie dollar. And then obviously on, on March the 20th, all eyes will be on the, the Federal Reserve's uh, Open Market Committee, um, their, their rate setting meeting, so yep. to speak. Um, so I guess any, any news on when they end their quantitative easing or whether they plan to, to do anything new on that front will, uh, will really be what people look for? Yeah, and, and look for, I mean, in this, um, in this meeting they will have a, um, they will be reviewing their economic projections as well for the US economy. So just getting a feel for where they see the US economy going. Um, obviously, there's been some negative um, sort of noise related to the budget cuts in the US, which come into effect on the first of uh, first of March. Is about 85 billion dollar impact this year, and that is expected to have an impact uh, about, of about a half a percent of, of US GDP. But I do think there's a lot of political um, uh, issues related to that, and that it does get more airtime than it probably deserves. I think the overall trend in the US is, is certainly better than it has been for a long time, and I think that that will continue to be, uh, to be a key driver there. In terms of the Reserve Bank in New Zealand, well, we know, um, you know Graham, uh, the Governor Graham Wheeler came out with a, with a, a speech last week and mentioned a number of, of, of ideas around um, intervening for, in the New Zealand dollar, but ultimately I think the speech and uh, the policy measures that he suggested was more academic than anything. Um, everyone got quite excited and the New Zealand dollar came under some selling pressure, but ultimately I don't think the Reserve Bank of New Zealand want to intervene or will intervene in any meaningful way. Uh, and I don't think we're going to see the OCR cut and I don't think we're going to see the uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand print any money. Um, I think we're going to be steady as she goes and, and hopefully uh, the scenario that we're suggesting in terms of the US, um, the US dollar stronger into the second half of this year and next year will take a little bit of heat off uh, the, uh, the Reserve Bank. Any views on, I guess, how much the US dollar could strengthen by over that time period, I mean against the, the Kiwi? Well, I think if you look at the long-term averages, the five-year average for the Kiwi US is around about 75 cents. The 10-year average is around about 70 cents. I mean, we've been in a long-term uptrend uh, against the US dollar for quite some time now. Um, if you go back actually all the way to 2001, um, at which time we were down at a, around about under 40 cents actually, we've been in a long-term uptrend since then. So. Um, and then you take 2008 and the start of the US um, quantitative easing program, the New Zealand dollar has been extremely strong. So in a way we've sort of gotten used to it, but I think ultimately um, it wouldn't surprise me to see the New Zealand dollar return to those long-term averages and uh, 75 cents I think would be a reasonable level to expect uh, the Kiwi US to get to by the end of this year. Um, I'm probably more uh, more bearish than a lot of other analysts out there. We still have a lot of um, a lot of analysts calling the New Zealand dollar up to uh, 88 cents and potentially even 90 cents. So, um, but uh, I think we'd all prefer this, to see the Kiwi a little bit lower at this stage. Yeah, I think a lot of exporters probably hope you're right and not them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks for that, Dan. That's Dan Bell from HiFX, and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.